Hello. This video is about different ways to join clauses. There are four ways that we're going to look at. First, coordinating conjunctions, then semicolons, which might be a new idea for some of you, conjunctive adverbs, and a couple of different ways to use them, and then finally, subordinating conjunctions. We're going to start with coordinating conjunctions. So, coordinating conjunctions are most famously known and remembered by this acronym. Even if you've heard this before, I'm going to encourage you to follow along because uh, I think I've got some ways that are going to help you remember uh, if you're having trouble with these. If you've never heard of this before, fanboys is a way that we can use to remember the most important coordinating conjunctions. So let's get started with these. This is what they are. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Now, you're probably looking at that list and saying, yes, I know every single one of those. And you might, but you might not. There are probably some there, some words that you know. There's probably also, or possibly also, some words you don't know. And this is the really tricky one and the one that really frustrates people. Words that you think you know, but you don't because we're using them in a new way, because they have a new meaning in this context. So we are using old words in a new way, and sometimes it takes a little while to, uh, to be comfortable with that. Let's take a look. The first one that we're going to look at, for, is the last kind here. Words that you think you know, but you might not. So for shows a reason. No, it doesn't. In this context, yes, it does. I play sports for I like to exercise. If that sentence seems strange to you, then <clears throat> I was right. This is a new meaning for an old word. So, let's take a look at another example. I slept late for I was tired. Again, this for, when we use it this way, it shows a reason. So, let's take a look at some problems that, uh, that people have. First of all, because is much more common than for. So, for can feel strange. Okay, so, if we go back here, I play sports because I like to exercise. I slept late because I was tired. If because fits, why don't I just use because? Well, there are reasons, and we'll talk about that later. But the point here is, maybe, that this for is a new meaning for you. If it is, you're going to have to pay attention for a while. You're going to have to be more careful than you have been. So let's move forward here. For is also a preposition. I waited for three hours. And when we practice these sentences in class, you not always, but usually about a third of the class, when I ask them to make um, to use for as a coordinating conjunction, they end up using it as a preposition. So it can be difficult to make that change. The next one is and, and I've got some good news for you. You know how to do this. There's nothing new here. And joins two equals. This is true for all coordinating conjunctions, but I find this is a good place to explain this. Just because we see a coordinating conjunction does not mean that it's always joining clauses. Okay. John sings and Mary dances. Yes, here, this and is a coordinating conjunction. She opened the book and she read the story. Is this a coordinating conjunction? Yes, because I've got she opened, I've got my subject, my related verb, and I've got she read, I've got another subject and another related verb. Salt and pepper. Is that joining two clauses? No, it's not. Salt is not a clause and pepper is not a clause. The next one is nor. And I often get a lot of students asking, eh, did you make a spelling mistake? That doesn't look like a word. I've never seen that before. It's funny how when somebody brings something to your attention, how often you notice it after that. So I did not make a mistake. This is correct. Nor is for negative addition. So when the first clause is negative and the second clause is also negative. 
Here's an example. I don't sing, so here's my negation, nor do I dance. So here, just trust me, here is the N, here's the negation there, okay? So what this sentence means is I don't sing and I don't dance. Well, if I can just say I don't do this and I don't do that, why don't I just say that? Well, because this sounds better. This sounds, it, 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 it's at a higher level, okay? It's more advanced. Let's look at another example. We don't like garlic, nor do we like onions. Before we move forward, I would like to point something out to you, which is this. Note how the subject and verb seem backwards in the second clause, right? So, nor do I dance, nor do we like onions. So the first couple times you're practicing this, here's a little trick to help yourself along. Forget about everything that comes before that. The last clause sounds like a sentence. Do I dance? Do we like onions? So if you make the second clause sound like a question, you will get the word order right here. And again, after a while, it seems normal and natural, but it might seem strange at first. So here are some problems. Both clauses must be negative. It's not good enough for one or the other to be negative. Both must be negative. And again, as we just talked about, subject verb inversion, which makes it look like a question. Okay. So, but at the same time, you can use that to help yourself when you're, when you're writing. Um, just slow down, stop, take a look at it. Does the last part of this clause look like a question? Yes. Then you're probably doing it right. But, well, but shows contrast or opposition. She likes music, but she can't play. I like candy, but my sister likes salty food. I don't know why I'm explaining this to you. If you don't know the word but, you haven't understood anything that I have said so far. So if you, if you speak English well enough to understand me, I'm sure you know the word but. Let's keep moving. Or, same thing. You... If you don't understand the word or, you don't understand what I'm saying anyway. So or shows an alternative. We can go to a movie or we can stay home. You can work alone or you can work with a partner. So we've had a couple of nice easy ones. Here's another one that's like for that is quite possibly a new meaning for an old word. Yet shows an exception. Now there's more to it than that, but let's take a look at some examples and then we'll talk about them. I want to lose weight, yet I never exercise. Logically, sensibly, do those two clauses go together? I want to lose weight, but even though I want to lose weight, I never exercise. Does that make sense? No, not really. That's, that's not the best way to lose weight. She wants to get married, yet she doesn't have a boyfriend. Okay, well, I'm no expert. Well, actually, I kind of am. Um, if you want to get married, you're going to need to have a partner. All right? And so uh, she doesn't have a boyfriend. Logically, this doesn't work. And yet is what shows this lack of logic. It shows that something is a little bit strange. So here are some problems. Yet is a specific kind of but. So there must be some lack of logic or some surprising aspect to the sentence. There must be something that kind of makes you go, huh? That doesn't seem quite right. So if you can use yet, you can use but, but not the other way around. I should say if you can use yet, you can often use but, almost always use but, but not the other way around. So here's one way to think of it. If we think of but as being this big blue circle and yet as being the small white circle, yet is kind of a, a more specific kind of but. Okay. So then I've got a question. Well, if I can use but, then why don't, sorry, then why do I need to learn to use yet? Well, yet shows the relationship between the ideas in your sentence more clearly. It's, it, it, it's pointing out, yes, I know there's a lack of logic here. Here are some problems. Yet is also an adverb, and this is probably how you first learned this word. 
So I haven't seen her yet. Is this movie over yet? Clearly, it's not working as a conjunction there. All right. So, so shows a result. She wants to pass the course, okay? And so she studies every day. He was happy, so he sang a song. Show, I'm sorry, so shows a result. But here's a problem. Do not confuse with so that, okay? And it's even more confusing because when we can write so that, we can often leave that that out, which then makes it more confusing. But if I can put a that in, so if it's possible to say so that, then I am not using, then it's not a coordinating conjunction. It's still a conjunction, but it's what we call a subordinating conjunction. So don't confuse so with so that. So, sorry, so that shows a purpose. He saved his money so that he could take a holiday. Okay? Now, again, that's not a coordinating conjunction. I'm just showing you that uh, so that you can keep those two uh, separate in your mind. Are you familiar with this idea? For and so are kind of two sides of the same whole. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. Let's take a look here. Now, there's a couple of different places I could start. I could start reading here, or I could start reading here. And where I start is going to give me different, um, different sentences. I've got a four here, and I've got a so here. Are you confused yet? Just wait. I'll make it clear. Let's take a look. He won the lottery, so he quit his job. Just read now. You have to imagine that there's a that there's a a capital H there. He won the lottery, so he quit his job. That makes sense. It follows the rule of of so. Okay, shows a result. But now I'm going to start the sentence down here. He quit his job, for he won the lottery. So here now, I've turned it around. One is showing the cause, and the other one is showing the result. Okay? But again, for and so are kind of opposites. They show the opposite side of the same coin. So that's it for fanboys. You've probably heard about fanboys before. Let's see, can we make this, maybe we can move those letters around and make a new word. What about fast bunny? No. Nace fob. Maybe not. Any fobs? No. Face knob? No, that doesn't sound good at all. Fan by so? No. Fast by on? You know what? Let's just stick with fanboys. Remember this acronym and you will be able to remember the coordinating conjunctions. Let's move on, and we're going to talk about semicolons. So there, ooh, there's a giant semicolon right there. Semicolon, what is this? Is it a comma? Is it a period? Well, it's actually kind of partway between both. So on the left side here, I've got a whole bunch of independent clauses, and on the right side, I've got a whole bunch of independent clauses. You will probably recognize these sentences because I use them to talk about coordinating conjunctions. But we could also put a semicolon between them. Now, I've got one giant semicolon there. That maybe wasn't the best idea. Maybe put a whole bunch of small semicolons. Show you a good example rather than a kind of funny, crazy example. That's how I could join all of these clauses together. Okay, with a semicolon. So let's look, take a look at some more examples. Some people eat meat. Some do not. I don't need to put a coordinating conjunction there. They started a business. They got rich. He played with fire. He got burned. Now, almost always when I introduce the semicolon to my class, there's at least three or four people who, what? Why do we have to learn the fanboys when I can just always use a semicolon? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Right? First of all, 
um, we use a semicolon to connect two independent clauses that are closely related and closely related in a clear and logical and obvious way. Not all clauses, the relationship between all clauses isn't that clear. Secondly, you need to use it sparingly, which is maybe a new word. That means seldom, not very often. So let me ask you a question. Do you see semicolons often? Well, that's how often you should use them, okay? They're a tool for you to use, and you can and you should use them, but don't get carried away. We also use semicolons with conjunctive adverbs, which is the next way that we're going to look at for joining clauses. So, let's look. Some people eat meat, some do not. That's the sentence we were just looking at. Conjunctive adverb would go in like this. So, I leave the semicolon just the way it was just a moment ago. I put my conjunctive adverb in and then it is followed immediately by a comma. Another example, they started a business, they got rich. I have a choice here. They started a business, eventually they got rich. So you see here how that changes the feeling, right? There's more information. They got rich but it wasn't immediate. And he played with fire he got burned. He played with fire. Consequently, he got burned. Now, this is one way of using conjunctive adverbs. So we have the first clause, and then a semicolon, conjunctive adverb, and then a comma here. That's one way. We can also do this, though. We can also, instead of having a semicolon here, we can also have a period, and then a capital H, and then we still need the comma. Okay. So that works as well. And there's, it comes down to style. There's really no difference. One of these isn't better than the other. Here is a list of conjunctive adverbs. Again, with a vocabulary list, be careful. They don't, just because they're on the same list in the same category, doesn't mean that they all uh, have the same meaning. Okay. So here's a list, a, a very short list if you want to use these, that's great, but make sure that you are using them correctly. Look them up, look for examples of other people using them before you start to use them yourself. All right, three ways to join clauses. Coordinating conjunctions, semicolons, and conjunctive adverbs. Wait a minute, you promised us four. You're right, I did. Here's the thing. These three, the three that we've looked at so far, these are for joining independent clauses. This last kind is for joining dependent clauses, okay? So let's take a look at some subordinating conjunctions. First of all, a subordinating conjunction can change an independent clause into a dependent clause. It makes the dependent clause less the focus of the sentence, and it makes the independent clause that it is joined to more the focus of the sentence. So, I drink coffee, but I prefer tea. The, the feeling of this sentence is that the, the importance of these two clauses, of these two ideas, is the same. Watch when I, have, when I do this. Although I drink coffee, I prefer tea. I've now changed it, and I've said, yeah, I drink coffee, but I prefer tea. That's the main point of this sentence. Look at some more examples. Even though it rained, we enjoyed the walk through the woods. So there's two things going on here. There's the rain, and then there's the enjoying the walk. The enjoying the walk is the main idea here. Because he was late, he missed his train. Okay, so the, the important part is he missed his train. I'm also giving the reason it's because he was late, but the point is, the, the main point, is that he missed his train. And again, these clauses have a feeling of one idea is more important than the other. So there you go. There are four ways to join clauses. Again, the first three join independent clauses. The last one, subordinating conjunctions, joins um, dependent clauses. So, there you have it. Those are the four ways to join clauses. 
Just watching a video may not be enough. Consequently, I have prepared a few exercises for you. Although you will need to practice, joining clauses really isn't that hard. Try the exercises below and you will be joining clauses correctly in no time. You see what I did there? I used all the different ways. Okay, thank you very much.